Before I entered university, back when I was in school, I was admitted to the hospital three days as I was infected with the dengue virus. So after recovery, when I went back to school, I learned that dengue is a killer disease. I thought to myself, how come I survived? How am I different from all the other people who succumbed to the virus? Having a, and, and this made me curious and ambitious about being a scientist and studying about this microscopic but very powerful virus. Having this in the back of my mind, I explored opportunities in viral research for my postgraduate studies during my undergrad. When I read about the comparative uh, biomedical sciences graduate program uh, at the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine, I was highly taken up by its opportunities in research and education. Getting selected to Ohio State University is such a huge milestone in my life. It further expanded my perspectives in research and science. So, having emerged from the novel coronavirus, it became my desire to be specific in COVID-related research. So, diabetes patients with many other factors are already at a higher risk of severe COVID-19. They are also already at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. This positive correlation between uh, COVID-19 and diabetes makes it imperative to study its implications on cardiovascular disease risk. This positive correlation shows that there's a possible higher risk of cardiovascular disease in diabetes patients with COVID-19 even after they are recovered. So, in time, COVID heightens the chance of diabetic patients getting uh, cardiovascular diseases, even though there are many possible mechanisms, the exact mechanism of action is not very well studied. So in our study, we will answer whether there is a possible risk of cardiometabolic risk in diabetic patients who contract the coronavirus. Why is this important? This is important because this is just not COVID. This virus in particular will disproportionately affect different populations. Studying about these populations will allow us to establish new methods uh, of therapeutics and preventive me uh, medicine to reduce post-COVID complications. So, in order to achieve our goal in our approach, we have three different groups. Healthy control, which does have COVID or diabetes, and severe COVID-19 patients who were admitted to the ICU uh, were divided as patients with diabetes and without diabetes. We collected blood from these three groups and we carried out high dimensional cytometry to look at immune cell numbers and uh, immune cell frequency. This is that we also collected plasma and we carried out techniques like ELISA and Cortex to look at plasma biomarkers which can predict cardiometabolic risk in these patients. Moving on to results, first we look at the plasma biomarkers and cytokine changes in these three groups. On the left side, you'll see uh, there's a heat map which compares non diabetic COVID patients and diabetic COVID patients. You see that all these chemokines and cytokines are significantly elevated in the diabetic patients compared to the non diabetic patients. And when you look at the box plot, the six box plots which represent different biomarkers. All these biomarkers are known markers for cardiometabolic risk. You will see that in the diabetic group, COVID-19 has significantly elevated levels of all these six biomarkers. This suggests a possible risk of atherosclerosis, heart failure, thrombosis, and uh, coronary artery disease in these patients. Then when we look at the immune cell changes, this slide, we're looking at the history figure, which summarizes or, uh, or gives a snapshot of all the different immune cells we looked at in this study. For example, if we take neutrophils, which is represented in uh, orange color, you will see that in the control group, it is much less compared to the COVID-19 severe group. And when you compare the COVID-19 group with and without diabetes, you will see the patients with diabetes have a higher level of neutrophils. 
Likewise, you can compare to the 40 cells, which is in purple color, to the 80 cells, which is in red, and these cells, which is in green. All three have significantly gone down in the diabetic patient group with severe COVID-19. We look at the same data in a more quantitative way. Uh, the neutrophils and intermediate monocytes, which are innate, non-specific early responders, they are significantly elevated again in the diabetic group compared to the other two groups. These cells, are, these cells give a pro-inflammatory immune response. Then when we look at the more adaptive specific responders like CD4 T cells and CD8 T cells, they have also significantly lowered in the diabetic group group compared to the non-diabetic and the control. And a unique cell subset called NKT-like cells, which has both features of innate and adaptive cells, they have significantly reduced in the diabetic patients compared to the non-diabetic severe COVID-19 patients. All these dysregulations suggest a possible risk of cardiovascular diseases in these diabetic patients. So what are our final results? We identified core immune signatures that predict increased risk of cardiovascular disease in diabetic patients with severe COVID-19. So why is this important? It is important because it is not just COVID. It is not just contracting the virus and then recovering. Virus disproportionately affects different populations even after they are recovering. So we will follow up with these patients throughout their recovery to look at changes in their plasma biomarkers and immune cells indicating cardiovascular disease risk. Next step in our study is to come up with uh, therapeutic and preventive methods to reduce post-COVID complications uh, because this virus in particular is very picky about who gets severe versus mild symptoms. There is an urgent need to optimize and standardize, standardize the outcome, uh, outcome measures of this important patient group. Our study, with many other studies going on, focus, uh, is focused on getting this aimed at. Thank you so much.